Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Inside CG. Today I'm joined by Imran Lambar, a standout member of Champions Gym June Lup who has an absolutely amazing story. His transformation has been nothing short of mind-boggling when you see the side-by-side, -side, but uh, Imran, he was born in Zimbabwe, he moved to New Zealand and he ended up in Perth. He grew up on the streets of the northern suburbs where he got involved with some of the wrong people, a little bit of addiction, got himself into trouble and after you know surviving on you know fast foods once a day, perhaps a couple of poor choices, he decided that he had to make a change in the positive direction and what he did was he started up his journey of Muay Thai and very shortly you're going to hear how he's done it, some of the setbacks he's faced, some of the challenges and his upbringing and how it's shaped him to become the man he is today, studying a degree in finance. Imran, tell us a little bit more about yourself, your heritage, you know, where you were born, where you were raised, and um, how you've got to where you are today, man. Um, so my name's Imran, I'm 23. Uh, I'm currently studying finance at ECU. Um, yeah, I was born in Zimbabwe. I moved over here as an immigrant when I was 10 years old, and I've been back and forth between Perth and Auckland since. And yeah, train Muay Thai at Champions Gym. Awesome, Imran. Yeah. And um, obviously, you've gone from Zimbabwe to New Zealand to Perth. Tell us a little bit about life in Zimbabwe and how old you were when you moved over to New Zealand, and how was that experience? So I was ten when I first left, um, and over there it was a bit rough when we left. So obviously, my parents did what they could to scramble together so we could get out of there. We came to Perth first, and. Um, my parents ended up getting divorced shortly after, so I was kind of back and forth between the houses and my mum had family in Auckland, so she ended up moving over there back and forth as it goes, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, moving over was, uh, um, for me, because I was younger, I guess the transition wasn't so harsh, but for my brother and sister, my brother's eight years older than me, my sister's five years older than me, so mm -hmm. when they came over, they were like straight into high school, and that was a lot more difficult for them. Um, just the whole culture shock, everything like that, but I seem to have adjusted decently anyway, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit more about your, you know, the, the struggles that you noticed that your your older brother and sister had, like, and the culture difference from Zimbabwe to, to where they ended up. Um, obviously, like, the race, race side of it was a bit different, cultural shock, like, you know, people are behaving this way, that way. Um, you know, you go to your friend's house and they're telling their parents off and you're like, what the hell is going on here? Certain stuff like that. Um, obviously, it was uh, somewhat of a re religious background prior. Um, so just y your general stuff that you could imagine. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so you're the youngest of the family, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and when you moved over to... Ha what was your decision to move or the parents decision to move you from New Zealand to Perth and how'd you get here? Tell us a bit more about that. Um, so my parents is, I couldn't even tell you just moving around a lot. Like, like I said, when they got divorced, I didn't see too much of dad after that. Um, and then, yeah, mum went over there cause the family was there. It's very tight. Um, in New Zealand in terms of the economy is very harsh, especially, you know, you don't have things like, the mines where you can kind of just jump onto the mines and you know earn a decent wage and stuff like that. So it was very difficult for her over there, being a single mom with you know taking care of th three of us. I was pretty big when I was young, so she had to feed me a lot. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, ended up coming back here, stabilized a little bit. Great. Yeah. Man. So I I couldn't even tell you exactly the reasons why, but I think they were both, you know, after moving country and then that happening for them. They were kind of just trying to find their feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's something I can relate to having my mum raising the three of us and uh, it's, it's such a great story. Now, you've moved to Perth. Tell us a bit more about where you grew up and um, your hood. Um, all over Perth. Uh, Morley area, Bayswater area, uh, Belmont up north, um, Jindalup Clarkson. That's pretty much it. Just running mm. a mark. Yeah. Running a muck. <laughs> Running a muck. 
<laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, as we know, there some of Perth's. Uh, oh, wouldn't say the hardest streets, but um, you know, when you're in the hood, uh, you know, everyone has a reputation. Everyone can fight. Uh, uh, from my memory, I grew up in Northbridge, um, and you know, Morley, all those areas. They're, they're they're hard. They're hard places if you're in with the wrong crowd. So, Imran, tell us a bit more about who was Imran growing up as a teenager and as a young man. Um, yeah, just. I was quite creative when I was younger, but I always had that little streak behind me. I was just, just being reckless. So I guess like I, I used to skate when I was younger, but it was pretty much just an excuse to get out of the house, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Started doing like a little bit of photography and stuff. Got some sponsorships, started like a YouTube channel, messed around with that for a little bit. But, you know, um, things started to take over uh, probably from like, 14 onwards I got heavily involved with a lot of stuff and drugs alcohol abuse everything like that you know kind of just started my battle with addictions and things like that um, which might have been a catalyst for me moving schools a lot because I kept getting into a lot of trouble um, mm. and then obviously it didn't help when we went to New Zealand because all the schools in New Zealand obviously we were staying in South Auckland and everything over there is just infested like with gangs and everything so mm -hmm. that obviously probably shaped me more so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you say shaped, tell me a little bit more about that. Like when you say shaped, what does that mean? Kind of, I guess, being more resilient, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Would you say it's fair to, well, would, would you say it's fair to say that, um, you know, growing up in, you know, like that gang, gang culture, um, getting into trouble and the drugs and stuff and the addiction, like, would you say that's something that's, that's, that has been a very valuable lesson in resilience and, you know, like, how has that shaped you as a person? Um, I guess once you overcome something like that, nothing else can really hold you back mentally because it's, it's a very tough thing to overcome, I suppose. And it's very much like becoming a product of your environment and reshaping, you have to reshape everything. You know, your mm -hmm. habits, the way you think, the way you behave, you know, everything. You have to start being more proactive instead of reactive to situations and all of that. It's yeah. like psychological warfare to overcome something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. not only that, but the social aspects of kind of rewiring yourself so you can, you know, not really, you know, fit in with normal normal stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So man. No. It, yeah, it makes you more... Resilient in that manner, I suppose. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Was there like obviously, um, like I can totally relate, man. When it comes to you know growing up and having you know people around you in certain situations and getting into trouble, potentially hanging out with the wrong people. Was there any point in time, like for me, I knew there's a couple of things where, you know, my friends got into trouble, and I was like, if this is happening to them, what's happening next to me? And I question that. Was there any sort of turning point for you that you made a decision where like I need to be, I need to make changes for my future, because a lot of my friends they ended up in in jail and in in the shit essentially, but luckily Muay Thai kept me on that path. So what was it for you? Um, well, I've always like kind of been around it, so it was just normal to me, you know. Um, my dad was in it. My brother got deported probably when I was about thirteen as well. Mm -hmm. So seeing all the stuff that he went through kind of opened me up a little bit. Obviously, things didn't really change until probably around 20 for me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of just that realization of, well, what the fuck am I doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of just see the the merry-go-round, the spiral that everybody's on, and you kind of just want to get off it because you can see kind of what's happening, you know? People are going to jail, people are, you know... A lot of suicide, a lot of overdoses, a lot of nonsense going around you. So yeah. you kind of just kind of have to make that decision of where your future is going. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things, man. Suicide, um, especially in young men, you know, it's a big thing. Yeah. And like, I've lost s some really important people close to me growing up, and it really, really tears your heart out of your chest. And it's it's such yeah. a hard thing because you you lose people that you love. Yeah. Um, and then having a focus outside of that, obviously for someone like yourself, seeing other people and then realizing it's like, what's next for me if I don't make a change? And I think, yeah. you know, 
I really, really loved your story t when, when I spoke to you the other day. Um, and it really captivated me, knowing how hard your, you know, Zimbabwe is as a country and then having to move to New Zealand and then to Australia. Like that, that, that's a lot of change for a young person. And to see where you are now, um, that's very courageous, but also it, it's great to see that you've made some great choices. So tell us a little bit more about who you were um, before Champions Gym. Like what are some of the things that you were doing that perhaps maybe you look back and go, shit, could have been a bit better. Did you like to party or drink a little bit or...? Uh, yeah, of course, but yeah, probably went off the rails a bit too much, like I was saying. Um, mm. But yeah, that's all started to shift out. Well, I'd say around 20, I started easing back on everything. Probably haven't had a sip of alcohol in about two years. No cigarettes, no nothing like that. So, um, but leading up to Champions, I was like obviously trying to make these changes. I was going to the gym and whatnot, you know, lifting weights and stuff, but and just trying to get fit, diet and everything like that. But I was never really um, consistent with it, you know? Mm. I was still, you know, have like these bursts of motivation and you go for like two weeks, three weeks or something and then, you know, whatever catches up and you just fucking get lazy and you don't end up at the gym for like another month or something like that, you know? So it was very inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. I call that yo-yo gymming because... <laughs> It's down, it's up, it's down, and then it's never actually consistently moving towards any sort of direction, which sucks. Yeah. But, you know, like we all have to go through it to know what we want and what we don't want, especially when it comes to looking after ourselves and staying strong and fit and healthy, especially. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's Imran. Um, he's had this hard upbringing. He's been through some shit as a youngster. You know, like you and I talked about it. It was almost like we were street kids. You know, we're like we were out playing. You know, for me, it was like be home before the street lights come on. Um, and you know, you learn a lot, you become street smart and you learn, you know, to read social cues of, you know, maybe when things are going to hit the fan or, you know, like you get into a bit of trouble and it kind of wakes you up to realize like shit, a couple of steps away from maybe taking too many steps in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. what compelled you to start Muay Thai? Um, it's just always been something I've wanted to do. I've always been interested in, um, like combat sports and whatnot. Um, when I was growing up, all the boys around me were like all into boxing and things like that. And they were all getting like their golden gloves and things. I just never ended up joining up a gym, you know? Everybody around me was doing it. It just never really panned out for me. Mm. Yeah. What was that kind of decision to go, let's give Champions Gym Gym up a go and um, let's go all in? Um, well, it was like, the gym's opening up, they're a new gym, I'm new to it, why not? At least I'm not joining up with, like, a bunch of people around me that are, like, a lot more experienced and everything like that. I can get started with the new gym, you know, kind of thing, and it, it was pretty much just a goal to just actually learn how to fight. I feel like it's an essential tool, you know, that kind of men should have, you know. One would say something around the area of men should protect and provide, I guess, so, I mean... I can't protect my cubs or my loved ones if I don't know how to, the right means, you know. I mean, you can always go and grab a weapon, but I mean, that's not really, you know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big believer, and this is something I push a lot on the people that I coach, is like, if you didn't have anything and push comes to shove and your back's against the wall, how are you going to act? Exactly, uh, yeah. And I like that mentality that you have. It's like, how do you protect and provide? And that's important, especially as we get older and we, you know, we have people we love and especially we start having children and um, our offspring, it's important that we can protect them, which is so important. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about your lifestyle. Like when you're just going talking about peaks and troughs with your gym experiences before, you know, some weeks were great. You were red hot with your motivation. You were red hot, um, you know, hitting it. And you were like, yes, I'm going the right. And then you just go, eh, CBF, yeah. can't find Let's yeah. about your lifestyle. Like, what were you eating? What were you drinking? What did a typical week look like for Imran prior to obviously finding that twenty sort of year old mark? No filter. Don't be no afraid. Shit. <laughs> like around that twenty year mark up to now. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, just like random bursts of motivation. You'd go in, train, and then whatever would happen, you know, just kind of fall off. My diet was fucking non-existent like i'd probably be eating one meal a day or something like that if anything freaking fast foods and stuff like that i was living on my own i didn't really know how to cook back then so just mm. like nando's hungry jacks whatever the hell you know and kfc and stuff um mm. yeah i wasn't like yeah there was no structure in my life at all 
Yeah. And no structure in my life at all. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm intrigued to know this, Imran. In this time that you're telling me about, and like, who doesn't love fast food? I love a fast food every now and again. Nothing wrong yeah. with it. But when you're having it every day, you're having one meal a day, your body's gone, where's the real food at? Yeah, exactly. What were you as a human being, what were you working towards and what were you striving towards in that, that sort of period in time? Well, I think that's probably what the issue was. I didn't actually have a goal. I didn't actually have a goal. I didn't, you know, I'd have the burst and then it'd be like, what am I really doing it for kind of thing, you know? I didn't mm-hmm. have anything I was working towards, which is why I was so stagnant in life, you know? If you don't know what your target is, you're just going to aim straight, right? So mm-hmm. that's pretty much what was happening. Yeah, as we yeah. call it, spray and pray, as we call it, spray and pray, just like when you're sparring. <laughs> you yeah. haven't got a goal, you're just throwing everything in there. Yeah. Um, I get it, man, and um, there's been you know periods where myself have gone through that growing up and seeing friends and, and, and especially guys going through that. Um, it is hard to see, especially when you know you start to find some form of structure, and you know you have this place you have to show up to every day, or you know every couple of days a week. Um, and that's one big thing that really stood out to me that you just said before is structure. Yeah. So before we go into that, I'd love for you to share what you look like at the beginning, and what you look like now, because I recently saw a transformation photo of yourself, and I think our viewers would love to see this because I think it's absolutely phenomenal. With yes, wow, take a look. <laughs> that this is Imran before on the left Imran what were you weighing here just keeping that up while you t- tell us like uh, just so we can see it while you talk to us what were uh, you weighing how did it uh, feel honestly I don't have a clue how much I was weighing I was probably fluctuating I'd say like 90 93 around then wow um, how were you feeling when you woke up and how would you sleep and how's your moods and how are your energy levels and your libido uh, extremely lethargic in general I couldn't really focus you know things like that like it'd be a struggle to really you know focus on anything do anything and be like coffee was the thing right (laughs) (laughs) coffee coffee was getting me through the days Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right cool and if we look at the guy on the right let's just keep that up there because are those abs that i can see look like a little bit like wolverine there if we just change uh add some claws in there and maybe put a huge jack that's wolverine's physique right there you've got abs like i'm not just talking about this because i want to talk about your success but i want to know like who are the two people in front of us right now? And on the right, like, who are you now compared to who you are? There? What are the noticeable changes you've gone through? Tell me about that. Why are you holding it up? Because that, that is an effort in itself. Um, probably just mind state in general, I'd say. That's the biggest mm-hmm. shift is mindset. I had the same resources in both photos, but I wasn't taking advantage of them. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And... Would you just say it's mindset that you've changed? Because, man, I can tell there's a, a lot less belly fat there, man. There's a lot more, <laughs> and, uh, there's a lot more uh, structure in the chest, especially, and the shoulders. Look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely leaned out a bit, eh? But, That's um, awesome. Do you, know, do you know what you've lost and, you know, the body fat and lean muscle, anything like that you've been? I honestly wouldn't have a clue. Like, going through it, I, I was not weighing myself or anything. Just mm-hmm. because when, when I started, obviously, I was doing that, and each week you weigh yourself, and it fluctuates so much. You're not sure whether the muscle's mm-hmm. going, whether the fat's going, and that was just obviously messing with my head. So I'd take mm-hmm. photos every every week or every two weeks and just go off that, you know? Wow. I'd say the wow. biggest thing, like, I've, I've never had a nutritionist or a personal trainer, but I just kind of pieced everything together and just assumed it would pan out, I guess, and just stuck to it, and just, you know, uh, I'd go for two weeks, see if... If, if it was working with like my gym routine with what I was eating and whatnot and then mm-hmm. you know if I wasn't feeling it I'd restructure and restructure it and yeah I just kind of stuck to it yeah I love that. and thanks for sharing that as well man that those images right. those images side by side is it's a stark contrast man and for me when I see that it brings me so much happiness and pride to see someone like yourself uh, kind of just going from where you were as I was saying, spraying and praying, hoping for the best, eating fast food once a day, you know, kind of not really sure about what, you didn't have any structure. And to make a change almost like a 180 on itself is huge, man. Um, what were some of the- stru- This is currently where I'm at now. Oh, damn, I thought that was <laughs> well done. That's amazing. Look, look at the obliques coming out. That's great. Hey, look at that everything. V coming out, We're gonna tell you using, uh, underwear modeling. Nah, um, that contract is what I'm saying, man. 
just so our, our our viewers can understand and have a peek into your the mindset of Imran, you know, like because what you've done is phenomenal, man, and you keep progressing and dominating and improving yourself. And it's your journey which I love because it's your ownership based upon what you're wanting to get to, and we'll talk about that shortly. What the overall end goal is for you, but what are some of the things that you potentially struggle, or what are some of the things that you struggle with? when you were starting out and what were some of the things you found really hard that you could share with others? Um, I'd say just being disciplined, being disciplined with it, you know, with, with anything your, your mind's going to get in the way of it, you know, and you kind of have to have the willpower to overcome that, you know, the ego is structured obviously to keep us safe. You know, we don't really want to, break those barriers that we have because of once upon a time we were hunter gatherers and that's our mentality to keep us safe you know and that's what our ego kind of does and you have, have to kind of break that you know because mm -hmm. it'll it'll keep telling you like oh you trained you trained yesterday it's right you can skip today or oh you can have a cheat meal or you know rah, rah, skip out oh you know don't worry about the set oh you're doing cardio fuck you've done 10 minutes just hop off the treadmill kind of thing you know and you kind mm -hmm. of have to have the willpower to overcome that and that's why I feel like having a, a vision for it, like an end goal is very important and also having the why, because if you have a why every time that moment comes up, you can use your why to kind of push through it, you know? So it shifts from being motivated to somewhat being disciplined to achieve it, you know? When you mention your why, what is your why? My why is to just be healthy like at the moment to just be healthy back then it was like i need to when when i started it was like i need to get my shit together like i'm tired of it I'm tired of it i was tired of just like flaking and stuff i was tired of being inconsistent i was tired of you know i was never insecure per se but i was never confident in myself you know so mm -hmm. it was pretty much just yeah my why was i need to get my shit together i need to change and i was yeah. I guess that was harsh on myself, I suppose, but I mean, it's what needed to happen. Mm. Yeah. And when we talk about the ego being structured in a way to keep us safe from when we were hunter gatherers, I've got a question for you because this is something that I'm, I'm like, it always think I always think about this. It's something my dad said to me when I was a young man. He said society has developed so much to the point now where we are all kept very safe, mm. and fighting is frowned upon it is outlawed because people shouldn't fight but the problem is it's still in our dna fighting and combat is now being kind of like put away but young men like yourself and i who have been angry or we've had things gr growing up where things there's a lot of change there's a lot of instability broken families you know we were street kids like do you believe that young men still have DNA, still have fighting in their deep root in their DNA. And perhaps because we're trying to suppress the need to fight, they come out in other areas. Oh, yeah, definitely. If you're not channeling that energy, it's just going to burst, you know? It's like you, you keep suppressing and suppressing and suppressing it. it it's going to come out in ways. And if you're not able to control that energy, what, what do you think is going to happen, right? And I feel like what's like what your dad was saying, I feel like that's very true. We've, you look at something like, like wolves, and dogs like wolves are descendants of dogs and they used to be like these animals that used to be hunting wild ferocious animals and now it's been downbred to a, a dog that's in a handbag mm. pisses and shits in a handbag like mm. you, you can take that how you want and people will see that as controversial but yeah it's pretty much what's happening mm. yeah absolutely and that's why i always like to try and really push mental health and how having something as an outlet and having structure where you are have to come to somewhere where you have an outlet where you're expressing combat and you're expressing yeah. yourself it's kind of feeding an innate um, deep-rooted part of our dna especially as men and mental health and drugs and alcohol and addiction and you know doing things to get attention and feeling love and feeling important and confident and significant so yeah like yeah i find it so powerful for men to to hit things and to have an exertion of themselves and get that the ego out in a way that's that's healthy and controlled yeah, um yeah. It's, it, back 100 500 a thousand years ago our bodies haven't changed too much based upon what we're doing you know? 
Um, a big thing was um, I read a book by James Clear called Atomic Habits. And it mm-hmm. talks about having uphill habits, downhill habits. So, of course, like, let's say downhill habits are things like just overindulgence in whatever it might be, food, you know, mm-hmm. drugs, sex, whatever it is. Having bad habits of cleanliness, hygiene, and things like that. Uphill habits is things like, you know, being fit, you know, educating yourself, or, or, or things that make you get better each day instead of declining each day. And I mm-hmm. think that, you know, somewhat um, addictive personality that I once had I was channeling in the wrong ways and something mm-hmm. like being fit is channeling that and it's the same energy the same energy how I used to cope with things once upon a time of like you know shit's happening this that let me go run a mark let me go do this let me go do that now that same energy is just being re- redirected in a more constructive way to where I'm educating myself I'm just putting that energy into like more positive things like working working out you know studying things like this you know and redeveloping myself and using that that energy that once used to destruct me into something that's creating me and creating a better version of myself. Amazing, man. I love that. Um, so back to structure and you're talking about obviously discipline was a thing you struggled with at the beginning, um, you know, having to like talk yourself in and out of things based upon what the inner voice told us. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I speak about this inner voice because I have many <laughs> depending on which hat I'm wearing, whether it's a business owner, coach, yeah. man, yeah. you know, father, husband, but what other sort of things were you, what other things have you noticed that you struggle with um, during that time to where you are today with the Muay Thai journey? Um, well, I'm not too sure if I understand the question, right? Yeah. Can so, you repeat the question for me? Yeah, so discipline has been one thing that's kind of been the, the, the thing that you struggle with at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Are there any other sort of like things that you've kind of, had to work through to get to where you are today in your Muay Thai journey? Um, of course, routine, a diet, you have to be able to fuel your workouts properly. You know, you can't just be living off pre-workout. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah pre-workout. Yeah, whole. yeah, and um, just, just showing up and being consistent, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely easier to rock up to a place like Champions where the community is really nice, you know? and it's familiar faces and everything like that and everybody it kind of becomes a bit of a family like even over the weekends if I don't go I'm like fuck I miss it by Monday you know oh, so great. like yeah so that's definitely helped but um yeah yeah it's awesome man do you have any sort of tips hacks or tricks that you could impart with other young men who maybe struggle with the discipline struggle with the routine struggle to talk them in and out of things where potentially they should be doing, but they probably don't want to like, what are some of the tricks or the hacks or even nutrition and like having a better mindset? What would you share with them? Top five tips. I'd say the biggest thing would be to, to have a vision of yourself, you know, 10 years, five years down the line and start working backwards from it. Develop your why, why do you want to achieve that? Probably the biggest thing. And then obviously, yeah, work backwards, start, do s- small increments, you know, it, small measurable increments, stay consistent. You know, you don't have to be like freaking just randomly start and start running 5Ks every day, 10Ks every day, or like going to a boxing Muay Thai class every every day, you know, just do mm. small little things that, small little wins, and then you just keep loading it on, keep loading it on slowly and steady. It's the biggest thing. Like it's, it's better to have, a mentality of a tortoise over a hair, you know, because mm. those rapid bursts of energies, you're going to end up burning out. So it's better to stay consistent with whatever it is, you know, identify what's what's happening in your life, whatever your case is, you know, see the areas that you can improve on, whether mentally, socially, physically, whatever it is, you know, like I was saying, those up your habits, down your habits, it, it's very big. And also like you can, you can be harsh on yourself. So always make sure that you like put that space to like go back to whatever your comfort zone is for that day. You know, have a rest day, have a cheat meal kind of thing because that's one thing that I didn't do. Mm. You know, starting out and I was like harsh on myself. And when I started easing up on that, you know, having like a cheat meal or like having a rest day and just like doing what I what I enjoy doing. Um, then like my my growth was just a lot more rapid. You know, because you so, have something to look forward to, I suppose, as well, if you're not enjoying the process. Mm-hmm. 
Would it yeah. be fair to say you were kind of all or nothing before and now you've kind of implemented that 80-20 rule into your life? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Why would you say the all or nothing method wasn't great for you? Oh, it worked. It served its purpose, but it's not something that you can do forever. Not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Yeah. 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 I asked that question because, like, I'm a big believer in the 80 20 rule based upon my own personal experience. But when it comes to all or nothing, I used to be very, very guilty for it. Yeah. Being that um, background in fighting where I grew up as a teenager, it was like, all right, we're in fight camp, mm. all or nothing. The food, the sleep, the nutrition, the training, the running is going to be spot on. And then when you become like no longer a fighter uh, and you just have to, all right, you're the boss now and you're an adult, nothing's stopping you from doing whatever the hell you want when on, whenever you want. It was kind of like, oh, okay, uh, what now? And you become a little bit lost. Whereas yeah. the 80 rule, you bring it in, it still gives you room to do the shit you enjoy, but there's 80% of the things that you should do, whether it's what you put in your mouth, what you're thinking, people you hang around, or just your activities overall. It's so powerful. You know? Yeah. So, love it. Yeah. Imran, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with your journey? Uh, oh, before I ask that question, what is your end goal and what are you hoping to work towards um, in your journey? What is what is in the immediate future for you? Um, I'd say short-term goals would be I'd like to fight in the next hit out. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to Thailand end of the year, go train and kind of see if I can level up a bit. Hopefully when I come back, maybe start actually fighting. Um, and in terms of personal life, probably just stay on path with uni, make sure I'm, you know, keeping a good GPA and whatnot. And yeah, maintain all of that. Awesome. Yeah. Are you looking to, what are you looking to do with your career in finance? Um, hopefully get into investment banking. And nice. um, yeah, start up some businesses and stuff down the line. The entrepreneurial spirit got me in trouble too much, so let's see if we can use it for good. <laughs> Absolutely. And with your with your training and fighting, um, and your wishes to, to to pursue that as well in in your your training side of things, why is fighting something that you want to do? I just love it. I don't know. I just love it. Like, there's no. I, don't know, I can't think of like a dead set point to it, but I just love it. Like. Just the energy that you feel from just even being in there, sparring, hitting the pads, whatever it is. Like, I'm still obviously very new to it. I don't have any prior fighting experience coming into um, champions. Like, I never went to a gym or anything like that before, so I'm very new to it. But it just feels like home. Like, you know, you, you, there's no better feeling. You just, just, it's just powerful. Yeah. yeah. One sure thing I love about... Yeah, one thing I love about your, your your mentality, your mindset is having that white belt mentality. You're new to it. It's kind of like having a, a receptive and open mind to whatever comes will give it a go. And I think that's so important for life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I can if I can just scaffold of what you said when it comes to your training journey and where you'd like to go in fighting, working towards a result or getting into a hit out and going to Thailand, come back one day wanting to fight. When it comes to your personal life, speaking from experience, it's no different. And I think if I can share something with yourself and also the listeners uh, listening to this podcast, it's like the beauty of martial arts and Muay Thai. And this is the thing that's like the way you train and the, the way you apply yourself and the attitude you have and the standards that you have, you can basically take that and apply it to you from your fighting to your personal life to achieve whatever you set your mind to because you're working to an end result. There's days when you wake up when everyone's asleep and the weather's cold and you don't want to do it and you're going to have to do it. And there's days where you're going to get beaten up and you're going to, have your heart broken and you're going to have promises broken. And it's like, how do you push through that? Yeah. So I, I love that, man. And um, you remind me a lot of myself. I think in our conversation, I said, street kids, if you grew up on the streets, you know, you come from broken families, you have trauma in your childhood. It makes such a, a powerful fighter because the fire burns bright deep within yourself. Yeah. And it's a difference between giving up when, you know, you get to that point or you go, okay, shit, we're in hell. Let's keep on walking. Yeah, it's, love a, it. it's a different motivation, you know? It's all that stuff that's happened to you. You can look at it as if it's it's an opportunity. You have a different source of energy, you know. You have a different source of energy. Whatever's happening, you can reflect on that stuff and use it to push through whatever it is. Absolutely, man, love it. Imran, is there anything else before we wrap it up today that you'd like to share with our viewers, listeners? Um, I had some questions for you. If you want to answer them, yeah, go ahead, man. I hope you. Yeah. I, I look forward. 
So I've never been asking me many questions on a podcast, but go ahead. Um, what advice do you have for people entering combat sports and is there any suggestions on how one can speed up their progression? Great question. How do people enter combat sports or advice for them and how do they speed up their progression? Well, number one, I think is you have to have a why. Why are you wanting to do this? And this is something I ask all of my students all the time. I say, why are you wanting to come here and what is the reason? If you don't have a reason or your why is not strong enough, you're wasting your time. Don't do it. Go stick to what you're doing or take some time out, look in the mirror and look deep within yourself and look yourself in the eye and ask yourself, why do I want to achieve this and why is it important to me? Mm. Um, and how do you speed up your progression? Well, this is something that is something I've learned over the years and it's something like after fighting, I, during fighting, I had a coach. After I stopped yeah. fighting, I didn't have a coach. And re-engaging a mentor in the last five years has put a trainer back in my corner to help me develop and, and grow as an individual and never stop. Mm -hmm. Is, And this relates to people wanting to progress faster. It's like always have an open mind and have a white belt mentality with everything that you face yourself or you put every position you put yourself in or anything you face yourself with. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because one thing I see a lot happening especially when people are getting into martial arts these days, this is something I'm going to harp on about and be very honest about. People might hate me for saying this. We live in a generation where if you want food, it gets delivered to your door. You don't have to lift a finger or you don't have yeah. to lift a, a foot off the couch. Um, you, you, you just tap it on your phone. If you want um, someone to drive you somewhere, you just walk out your house and jump in the car and they'll take you there. You know, like everything is so instantaneous today where you press a button, it's done, and there's no actual work for it. Unfortunately, martial arts, well, yeah, it's very little effort, but martial arts in itself is very opposite to that. Mm. You know, you get martial artists that have been doing it their whole life. They might not fight, but they work and they work. And, they, and there's a long lineage of people before them that have worked to get them, help get them this far. And it's yeah. like, you have to always stay open-minded and work because no one is going to give you anything in martial arts. It, everything is earned. Yeah. And if people become too smart, and I'm saying this from experience and where I've failed in the past, you start to think you know better than the people around you or your coaches or you yeah. think you're smarter than the game. That is the number one downfall where you put a ceiling over your head and you stop growing very quickly. And okay. the other thing I'd like to say is always ask questions. Always. Ask questions because people around you, whether it's your coaches, your more advanced people around you, um, they have a lot of knowledge and experience. I used to go to Thailand as a teenager when I was training over there and fighting. I was like, I always ask the high level guys, the world champions, um, the leaders to find out like, what do they do? What are the things that they, you know, what are the actions they take? What is the mindset they have? What is their work ethic like? And I try and match them and just chase them, chase the leader. That's one of my big things that I, I believe in. Yeah, stay in apprentice mode. Always. always. It's hard sometimes, especially as a man with an ego, but it's important. Yeah. Um, second, do you have any advice for time management? Obviously you're a dad, you're a fighter, you're running, you're the brains behind the whole business. So how do you find time to, you know, get everything done, still be, you know, good husband, good father, good coach, good business owner, all the rest of it, and still be able to take care of yourself? That's a great question. I appreciate you asking that. How do I make, uh, how do I find the time to do things that I do? Yeah. So wearing different, ha wearing different hats is definitely a challenge that I face. Whether, you know, being a dad, being a husband, being a business owner, being the leader to my people that I need to be, but also driving Champions Gym forward. Um, look, I think the big thing is being flexible um, and not going, you know, not setting a rigid routine. So there's things that kind of like in my schedule is making sure that I make time for myself. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing. And, and in the past, I've heard people say, ah, that's selfish or that's something that you know, it's not always about you and I couldn't agree more, but the thing is, it's not, um, it's not, you don't have to, but you can't afford not to, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that's where, you know, two hours of my week, two to three hours of my week is based around making sure that I train myself, mm -hmm. I employ a strength conditioning coach. Um, and then I basically try to make sure my calendar has my work in there. So, you know, from when I wake up, I spend time with my boy and my wife, we enjoy coffee in bed, and then we go off to work. And the first, you know, four or five hours is just all the deep work. And then after that, we have our meetings. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I'm really, really big on is being behind every single one of my team, my team members and my staff and giving them the support they need, but also 
teaching them the skills that they need to be powerful in their own roles because I can't be the person to kind of like carry them up the hill. It's yeah. important to make sure that they are autonomous and they can, you know, work on not only teach them what to do, but how to do it when I'm not around, which is so important because yeah. I know that I'm not going to be in this seat forever. You know, there's going to be one day where I'm going to become too old or I could die tomorrow. And the thing is, I want people to be able to continue on my legacy based upon what we've got this far to yeah. continue to keep going, which is so important for me. Um, I, I say people don't remember you for who you are. It's what you did in your lifetime that really counts that people go, oh, yeah, you did, did something good. And that's yeah. important to me. Yeah. Okay. Leave an impact. Yeah. Speaking yeah, on that. I time mean, management, planning, making time for yourself and making it priority and not yeah. talking yourself out and having great coaching and leadership around you. and great Having people good around people around you. you. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. <laughs> Um, and uh, you touched on your legacy. What's your plan with Champions Gym? Because like hearing of a, you know, a Muay Thai gym that has three locations and, you know, to this, to the standard that the facility is and still being able to like provide high quality coaching is pretty much unheard of, at least as far as mm -hmm. I know. So what's, what's your goal with Champions overall? My goal is to build a next generation or an army of people that are successful in their own lives. I want people to one day look back and go, you know, I was a part of that. And as a result yeah. of that, it's helped me achieve A, B, C, and D in my own life. Fulfillment mm -hmm. for that person or those people, whoever they are. Because like I said, whether you are training for a fight and trying to win the fight or you're trying to win a championship, it's no different to you wanting to, you know, drive the car you want to drive, you want to buy the house you want to buy, you want to get the promotion you want to promote in your own career or your own, it's not only a material thing, but your own happiness. It's no different, honestly. And that's like... If I can make an impact on the lives of the people that I'm working with who, are, who want to be a part of Champions Gym, whether it's a short time or big time, that is a vision for me to make sure I drive us forward. And having people that believe in that, understand that, and just will remember that mission at all times, whether I'm here or I'm long gone, that, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Leave behind a legacy. It's important, man, yeah. Because yeah. one day I want my grandchildren my great grandchildren to look back and go, oh yeah, that bloke did something good. Yeah. Oh, and I am also a product of a lineage of long line of my ancestors who have fought and they've fought and they've survived and they've worked their asses off to get to where we are today. And I have such a good opportunity and a platform where I'm born in Australia. I have, you know, everything at my fingertips and like, I want to make the most of that. Yeah. Because I see like where they've come from and Thailand is a hard upbringing. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I'm passionate about that. Sharing that yeah. with the world. Okay. Um, last question. Do you have three books or documentary suggestions for, I guess, personal development, business development, whatever it is? It's three book or documentary suggestions. Three books. Okay. So The 4-Hour Working Week by Tim Ferriss is a big one. Mm -hmm. The next one is Winning. Winning by... Michael Jordan, strength coach. His name is off the top of my head. Um, he was in the Last Dance documentary. I'm just got it on my shelf right here. I can't even see it. Um, but winning by shit. I'm going to get in trouble here for not remembering. Um, <laughs> Tim Grover. Winning by Tim Grover is another one. Okay. And then the last book I would say is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willing. That's a big one. Oh yeah, yeah. Three definitely. books. I hate reading, but three books that have made a massive change in my life as a human being, as a business owner, as a dad, as a loving husband, those three books have been a game changer. So yeah, um, Winning by Tim Grover, uh, Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink, and Four Hour Working Week by um, Tim Ferriss, Game Changers. Awesome. Sorry. Awesome. Thanks for your questions, Imran. Now, um, Imran, before we wrap it up today, uh, is there anything you'd like to share with our viewers and our listeners today on the podcast? Uh, not off the top of my head, hey. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, it's been an amazing, um, you know, podcast getting to know you today. I uh, really appreciate you opening up and sharing your personal and your life experience with us. I really hope our enjoyers, uh, hope our viewers and listeners really enjoyed the podcast. Um, and we really look forward to seeing your future development. Uh, where can people f uh, follow your journey on Instagram and socials? Um, so my Instagram is henchfit. So hench full stop fit on Instagram. Um, don't really have any other social medias. I literally just made the account like last week. 
I try to stay off of it, but I want to start like building that up and start following along my fitness journey, start doing something like that, yeah. Absolutely, and hopefully your, your story inspires many other young men like yourself, and um, I hope to see more men taking up the sport of Muay Thai and developing and growing in a positive direction, which I, I love that you shared today. Yeah. My name is Paul Mark D. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Inside CG. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode with Imran, um, one of our standout members at Champions Gym June Love. As you can see, his transformation story, when you look at the side-by-side, -side, the before and after, and where he's at today is amazing. Imran, thanks for joining us today, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me.